Good evening, John Berman here in for Anderson. We are going to look at some protesters right now on the she streets of Chicago. They are not far from Roosevelt and South Canal there in the South Loop. America's third largest city is on edge tonight, reacting to dash cam video of a Chicago police officer, Jason Van Dyke, who is now charged with murder for shooting a young man, 17-year-old Laquan McDonald, dead in the street. Tension has been growing there for a long time. This happened in October of last year. Officer Van Dyke was charged today. A judge ordered the video released, and we're going to show it to you momentarily. A warning here, though, it is very troubling to watch. You see a person shot dead. We're going to show it to you so you can see what people in Chicago are seeing tonight and reacting to right now and what a jury will almost certainly see at the officer's trial. Again, he has been charged with murder. According to prosecutors, the shooting began shortly after Laquan McDonald. You see him right there walking down the street, a knife in his right hand. Less than 30 seconds after arriving on the scene, we are told Officer Van Dyke pulled his gun and fired. You see Laquan McDonald fall to the ground there after he is shot. You also see more shots fired while he is on the ground, some debris there flying about. There is no audio here. This went on for about 30 seconds. We are told 16 shots were fired by Officer Van Dyke. Many of them, most of them, while Laquan McDonald was on the ground, not moving. There is the body right there. Shortly after this, you do see a car arrive on the scene. That is the car right there. More officers do get out, but there is no more movement from that 17-year-old young man. A lot to talk about with our law enforcement experts tonight, as well as our correspondents on the scene in Chicago, starting with CNN's Rosa Flores. Rosa, this shooting, walk us through exactly what happened before and during. You know, the prosecutor put it like this. She said that investigators, both federal and state, went through this video second by second, dissecting exactly what had transpired. Now, they also talked to witnesses to corroborate what, what they were seeing and also what they were hearing from people on the street. And she put it like this. She took us through it. She said, if you look at this video, you'll see Laquan McDonald walking on the street. Six seconds after arriving on scene, the police officer who was charged with first degree murder is seen with his uh, weapon pointing at Laquan McDonald and he starts shooting. If you take a look at that video closely, you see it. You see him on the left hand side of the screen, John. Now, after that, the angle of this video changes. We asked the prosecutor why, what happened? And she said that the cruiser that had this dash cam moved. That's why the angle of that camera moved. And you don't see the police officer uh, firing his weapon. You only see Laquan McDonald on the ground. Now, like you mentioned, all of this happened in about 30 seconds. The officer discharging his weapon 16 times. Now, the autopsy report shows that Laquan McDonald was hit 16 times. Now, of course, you mentioned this community has been asking for this video to be released for a year now. We finally get to see the video, and now that this officer is being charged with first-degree murder, his defense attorney saying that this officer uh, um, has th that this case must be tried in the courts and not in the media. There's a lot of questions, Rosa, John. about the timing of the charges. Why was it that the charges were only announced right before this video was released, the video that was released only because of the judge's orders? You know, we, we got to kind of have to take you back and give you the background. Community leaders here have been asking for the release of this video for a very, very long time. State and federal investigators got involved and they were doing a simultaneous investigation. Now, the U.S. attorney released a statement today saying that they continue to investigate. Their investigation is active and ongoing. Today, the prosecutor said, he told the media today, she said that the only reason that she released these charges early, even though she had to decided to file this these charges weeks ago is because of the release of this video now the release of this video is 
because a journalist filed a FOIA request and asked for the video to be released. A judge in civil court ordered for this video to be released at the very latest tomorrow, Wednesday. And so uh, because of leaks, we are told, this video was released early. And of course, we saw the uh, police superintendent and the mayor here making this announcement, asking for calm, asking for people to, yes, to exercise their rights, but to keep calm and to protect property here in the city of Chicago. All right, Rosa Flores for us in Chicago explaining the situation. We are looking at live pictures right now of what appears to be a relatively small march or protest through the streets of Chicago. Maybe 100 people there. They've been moving through uh, the South Loop or near there fairly slowly, apparently very peacefully, at least so far, walking through. There has been some concern of what might happen when this video came out. We had been told for some time that it was bad, and seeing it, it is disturbing to see. With me here tonight, CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Sonny Haas, and also CNN law enforcement analyst and retired NYPD detective Harry Haug. Sonny, you've seen the video right now. We had been told for some time that this was a very disturbing video. Your reaction? Well, I, I'm heartbroken by it. I'm, I'm disturbed, and, and I'm disturbed not only uh, as a lawyer, of course, as a former prosecutor, because of the length of time it took to bring these charges, given the fact that there is this extremely graphic video, but I'm, I'm, I'm confused and concerned and hurt as a mother of a teenage black boy. We mm. know the statistics, John. Uh, we know that my son is 21, per, is 21 times more likely to be killed by a police officer than his white friends. There is something fundamentally wrong with our society if that stat still holds true today, not only in Chicago, but all over our country. So when I'm looking at, at this video over and over and over again, I see the death of, of not only this young man but also teenager um but but also just of so many young boys and teens that have come before and and my question that, that sort of goes over and over again in my mind is what do we do about this when does it stop again uh, just a moment ago you're looking at live pictures of some protests in chicago about 100 people moving through the streets fairly peacefully right now reacting to the video just released today of laquan mcdonald 17 years old uh, being killed by officer jason van dyke about one year ago. Harry Houck, NYPD detective, retired. You see the video. We've all seen the video right, right now. Mm -hmm. Laquan McDonald has a knife in his yes. hand. He does appear to have the knife in his hand, mm -hmm. but he does not appear at any moment to be moving toward that officer or making any kind of threatening gestures toward that officer. Well, John, let me tell you something. Now that all the video is out and the evidence is out here in this case, I cannot condone any of that officer's actions at all. I watched this video very closely. We slowed it down back and forth several times. All right, the fact is, when that officer got out of the car, I thought at least the first shots were going to be okay, based on mm. reports before. But after seeing this, him just getting out of the car, you see there's a fence uh, to the right where the, where the uh, perpetrator was moving to, Mr. McDonald. All right, there was no life, nobody's lives were in danger at that time. That fence was there. There was nobody on the street. There was no reason that officer should have fired those shots that fast. He at least had more time to try and get this guy to drop the knife. He had other options. Yes. Is what you're saying. Yes, Harry, I, I don't know. I mean, for people who don't watch us every night, you should watch us every night. But for those who don't, Harry, you, you were often extremely defensive of law enforcement. In exactly. fact, I've never heard you, I don't think, come out and condemn an officer's actions quite as strongly as this. So and, this I, and I have. And, and I call him like I see him. And I'm very big on evidence. And I've been on and I defended some of these officers' actions on an earlier show based on what we were seeing in the news. Now that the evidence is out, and I can take a close look at this, and I can see what was going on, I can see here's an officer who's got, I think, 16 years experience. He should have known a lot better at that, at that time when he got out of that vehicle. And, you, and like you said, he is walking away. And where is he walking away to? He's not walking away to where some civilians are hanging out where he can do any damage. He's pretty much surrounded here. And he's got a small knife. We know a lot of things now. And now I can definitely condone all the actions of that police officer. You can condemn all the actions, not condemn uh, them. That's right. I, I condemn all the actions of that police officer. And, and can I add to this? Because, you know, I, I think what's important for people to know is that this is a, an officer that had a 14-year career. This happened in a year ago, almost a year ago. 
There are 18 citizens' complaints against him that have mm. been filed. He's never been disciplined. Eight of those complaints alleged excessive force, and two involved the shooting of a firearm in addition to this one. Now, if that is true, I know so many police officers that are proud to have never had to shoot their weapon. I think exactly. you are one of them. Right. And so the fact that you have an officer for 14 years with 18 citizen complaints, two, now the third, involving police shooting that's still on the force and as was paid for the past year tells me that there is a real transparency problem with and the and Chicago well, Police well, Department. Let me tell you, a shooting investigation like this should not take a year. Well, that's right. Of I have, not. I have investigated many a shooting incidents with police officers when I was in the detective squad, and we had it cleaned up within two weeks. Uh, the fact here is that the reason why the people in Chicago maybe aren't trusting, I don't know who, mm -hmm. Maybe the district attorney's office and not so much the police departments here is because this investigation should have been done within two, three weeks. All right, they could probably had 20 detectives working on this case, had the answers, and then they should have came out and said, listen, we're going to charge this officer with a crime. The video is very clear here. All right, Harry, stand by. Sonny, stand by. In a moment, we're going to go back to Rosa Flores in Chicago. Ask her why prosecutors say it did take so long to bring charges. We're also going to keep our eye on these live protests you're looking at right now in the streets of Chicago. People marching upset by the release of this video, a video showing a young man, 17 years old, Laquan McDonald, being shot on the street by an officer. That officer now charged with first-degree murder. Later, we have some breaking news. All right, we're back tonight with protesters making their way through the streets of Chicago right now. You're looking at live pictures. They are reacting peacefully so far to the video just released within the last hour or two of the police shooting, a shooting that happened last year of a 17-year-old African-American young man by a white police officer. Today, the officer was charged with first-degree murder, and a judge ordered dash cam video of the shooting made public, and we are seeing it for the first time. This is a segment of the video. That is 17-year-old Laquan McDonald walking down the street. He does have a knife in his hand, and just after this, he is shot by Officer Jason Van Dyke, and he falls to the ground. At no point does it appear that Laquan McDonald made any kind of threatening gesture toward the cops or anyone else with that knife. For the next 13 seconds, prosecutors say the officer fired another 15 shots while McDonald was on the ground. He is the only officer to have fired his weapon. I want to go back to Rosa Flores, who's in Chicago, here with me in studio, Sonny Hostin and Harry Houck. And Rosa, the question has been, how come it took a year? You know, Harry Houck, who is often very defensive of police officers in situations like this, says this is really clear when you see the video. This officer could have been charged much more quickly. Why so long? And is the prosecutor now saying that, that she's concerned that maybe this officer can't get a fair trial with his video out there? You know, the prosecutor said that a simultaneous investigation between state and federal authorities has been going on for months and that they, the intent was to release all of their findings of the investigation, to release all of the charges at the same time. Now, the U.S. attorney releasing a statement saying that their investigation is still ongoing. It is active. They are still actively investigating hang on, hang on, on the Rosa, federal side. Hang on, one side. second. Hang now, on one today, second. I just wanna, Rosa, hang on. I just want to... We're looking again at these protests, these live pictures of protests on Chicago right now. Uh, there have been a hundred people, maybe more, marching through the streets very calmly, very peacefully. Hard to make out exactly what's happening, but it does appear that there are some people maybe scuffling a little bit, maybe just pushing up toward police officers there who are walking near them. Ryan Young, our correspondent, joins me now by phone. Ryan, uh, what can you tell us? Well, look, we're moving toward that site now, and we can see that obviously traffic is backed up in parts of the city. We've seen officers uh, through intersections throughout Michigan Avenue in the numbers of 20 to 30 grouped together at certain different intersections, on bike, um, in their police patrol cars, uh, with flashing lights, and obviously moving through parts of the city. Um, we are trying to catch up to the back part of the protesters. Obviously, they've been moving. We've been told about a group of 200. Uh, we know that some dispersed um, a little bit earlier. But we were told by protesters early this afternoon that they were intent on getting out there in the street once they knew that they would be, um, once this video was released. I mean, they told us that last week. And most of them told us they wanted to make sure that they were um, peaceful, but obviously there were others who were concerned about what the message would be once they hit the street. So we're right now working our way toward the last uh, place where the protesters were reported to be. 
uh, and that's what we're doing right now, Doc. Uh, and we should note that the mayor, Rahm Emanuel, and the superintendent of police, Gary McCarthy, said earlier when they released this video, said that they welcomed protests. They expected protest, although they did say that the police force would make sure they are peaceful protests. And up until now, uh, they certainly yeah. have been peaceful on the streets. Um, and again, we're looking at live pictures, these aerials of what's going on there. Hard to make out exactly what's happening, but it does look like uh, some people there with police surrounding them. We'll get a better sense, Ryan, as you get closer to that scene. Let us know when you are there so you can tell us exactly what's happening on the ground. In the meantime, I want to go back to Rosa Flores, if we still have Rosa. Rosa, you were explaining to me uh, the prosecutor's um, concerns, if there are any, about the idea of getting a fair trial now that this video, this pretty shocking video, has been released. You know, I asked her that question. I said, uh, you know, how can you be sure that now that this video is going to be released that this man is going to get a fair trial? And I asked her, do you plan to, to ask uh, or, or um, ask for a motion to uh, delay the release of this trial so that the officer can get a fair trial? And, and she said, you know, just in uh, uh, just to be transparent, she said she wanted to make sure that the, the video was released. She knows that the community has been asking for this video to be released for a very long time. And uh, another journalist asked, asked her about the impact nationally about the, uh, the release of this video. She said, absolutely. They know that people around the nation are looking at this case and, 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 and wanting to see transparency. Um, and just in case you heard that, it looks like it was some sort of traffic incident. It wasn't anything related to um, the protests that are going on. But I should mention about the protests, John. Uh, I'm on Michigan Avenue. I've talked to a lot of the protesters. There's a lot of smaller groups uh, that are uh, coming together to, to protest, to demonstrate uh, around the release of this video. And what they told me is that they want to march on Michigan Avenue because they want to send a statement. They, wanted to, they want to send uh, a, a message that there will be an economic impact uh, because of this, because of their march. And of course, this is the magnificent mile here in, in Chicago. Uh, there's shops, thousands of people converge on this avenue to shop uh, on Black Friday. And so the protesters are looking at that and trying to make an economic impact. All right, Rosa Flores for us in John. Chicago right now. Again, we are looking at live pictures uh, of some protests in Chicago tonight where video has been released of an incident one year ago where a 17-year-old African-American boy, Laquan McDonald, was shot and killed by a white officer, Jason Van Dyke. That video just released tonight. It is shocking. I'm joined now by CNN political commentator, New York Times columnist Charles Blow by phone. Uh, Charles, just your reaction tonight. Well, the, the video is, is shocking. Um, but, you know, my reaction is, is slightly different from the people who've talked so far. I mean, I, I think we're getting to a point of fatigue of trying to analyze individual videos of individual cases. And by, and by, and by so doing, we're losing sight of the larger sociological and historical moment that we are witnessing as a country, right? That this would not be happening if America did not allow it to happen, right? Either consciously or subconsciously. These are not, you know, individual criminals on the street who are beholden to no one. These are officers who are officers of the law, servants of the public. And if more of the public were to say, this is unacceptable to us, rather than to look at these individual cases and say, you know, this is a political issue, this is an ideological issue, that this is an issue where it is only black people fighting for black people's lives, but rather that this is, a, this is, you know, this is about human beings and how we want our fellow citizens to be treated in our country. And until we as a society say that that is how we want our, our, our police officers to operate, then we are kind of undermining our own society. Democracy depends on faith and institutions. And when you have institutions where people begin, or certain groups of people begin to lose faith in those institutions, that those institutions will treat them fairly, that the power that they vest into those institutions will be, will be equally exercised over all citizens, then that is a danger for democracy itself. We have to stop, I believe. 
looking at these as individual one-off cases, arguing about, you know, in this moment of the video, I see this, and in this moment, I see that, and I'm on the cop side, and I'm a, no, this, this is about human beings. There's a, there's a boy, 17 years old, he is dead. He cannot be considered to be collateral damage in some political debate. We cannot, we cannot look at that and say, this is okay with me, because I understand that most of the officers are trying to do a good job and that this officer did not express in any overt way any sort of prejudice of any sort or whatsoever. Because what we do as a society is we draw our officers to society at large. And any kind of bias that we as a society have, they have. And they simply express it. And they're not always necessarily conscious of what we are thinking. We're not conscious. I'm not conscious everything that I'm thinking right now in the back of my head and whether or not I offer somebody or not, and no one ever is. You have to test. And so you will never know on an individual basis whether or not any individual who pulls a trigger has a bias unless you test for it. We can't keep having that kind of argument and right. continue to let the instruments of power Charles. leave people dead in the street. All right, Charles, hang on one second. I'm here with Sonny Hostin and Harry Houck. Sonny, you heard what Charles said. Do you not think that these questions are being asked, these, these bigger picture questions? Because there has been a different discussion, I think, in this country for the last year than there was beforehand. I think the discussion is starting. I don't think um, that it is complete. I, I don't think that it is um, uh, an intensive discussion, and I don't think it's a a collective joint discussion about the collective hurt that is being felt in communities of color. I mean, I can tell you after one of my segments earlier today with Wolf Blitzer, I got an email on my website that said, you know, um, you should, why are you so unhappy? He's been charged with, with first degree murder. Um, your people need to um, just be happy with that. And, and so that is just one viewer watching, uh, giving voice to, I think, this real divide, quite frankly, that we are seeing in our country. And I, I think to Charles' point, which I think is a really poignant one, which is this is a human issue. This is, should be a collective issue. This is not just a, a, an issue for people of color, for, for black people. This, this should be a, co a collective human issue. And, and I just have to say this, and I, I just have to call BS on the prosecutor here, quite frankly, because she said today that police, the reason it took her so long to file charges, this is Cook County's um, state's attorney, Anita Alvarez, that police shootings are highly complex matters that carry with them unique legal issues. Well, that may be true, but it does not take over a year to bring charges. I think the timing of these charges are really, really curious. Um, and I think the fact that a judge just recently said, you better release this video on Wednesday, mm. that on Tuesday we now have first-degree murder charges. And I'm not happy about that. I'm happy about the lack of transparency that we are seeing over and over again, not just in Chicago, but all over the country. Harry, a quick last word to you. You said you believe this officer should be charged with sure. first-degree murder. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, or what do you make of the comments you hear from Charles, that there's a systemic issue here that we're barely addressing, barely scratching <clears throat> the surface? Well, you know, I don't want to change the way I've been saying things here, but now that Charles Blow has come into the conversation, um, the thing is that I don't see this happening in epidemic proportions, as he's making it out to be. There are millions and millions of interactions with police officers every day out here on the street. All right. Now, are things like this going to happen? Yes. You know, hold on, hold on. You know why? That's not because, true, Harry. 20, hey, first let, of all, let well, you let me finish. I'll let you finish. But you're saying the it's problem, not epidemic proportions, problem, and that's it, not it, true. It, it's not. All right. Why the, are the black fact, men 21 percent here, more likely to you know be killed that more by police officers? Whites are killed than, by police officers why, every year than why blacks. Are Do you know black that? Men Do you know the real numbers? Times more right? Are there more to be whites killed, killed by one police officers than their white time, counterparts? She's got to let me talk Those here. Those are the stats. Harry, go ahead. All right, you got to let me talk here. So I don't think you this is an epidemic. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You do, and I let you say. Hey, hey, guys, guys, Harry, speak. 
Now, uh, I don't think this is epidemic proportions. Like I said, you know, there are police departments out there. Are there some problems with officers? Yes. we got millions of police officers out there, right? What the police department is trying to do is trying to evolve and change things. All right? This, what happened in Chicago, should not happen. But the problem is it's going to happen from time to time. Why? Because Time we, to time? Because we're human beings, and there's some bad cops that are going to get you know, get through the uh, the wall of investigation when they come on the police department. All right, you got police officers who make, who make bad decisions out there. You've got you've got lawyers who make bad decisions out there. You got people who make bad decisions out there. All right, something very bad is here. This man is dead. Okay, this man is dead here, and this officer should not have reacted the way he did. All right, Harry Houck, Sonny Hostin, Charles Blow. I do appreciate your time and your energy. We're going to watch this throughout the evening. Again, these are live pictures of the protests on the streets of Chicago right now. These protests look very calm, but people obviously very concerned and upset with the video just released today. Laquan McDonald killed more than a year ago by a police officer. Just ahead. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.